Welcome to your daily dose of leak code. Today we're doing the question reverse link list. Let's read the question. Given the head of a singly link list, reverse the list and return the reverse list. Okay, so what are the key takeaways from this? The first one is that this is a singly linked list. The second one, if you see an example three, we can be given an empty list. And the last one, we're already given the definition for our node. And another nice thing is based on the problem statement, we can calculate the best conceivable runtime or the BCR. And the best runtime we can do is O of N, since in order to reverse the list, we kind of need to visit every single node to do that. Okay, now let's think about some solutions to this. Okay, so the brute force way of doing this is what if we just turn this linked list into an array and then reverse the array and then turn the reversed array back into a linked list. It's not the prettiest, but it gets the job done. All right, let's write the code for this. Okay, first things first, let's check if we even have a head node. If we don't, then return none. If we do, then let's get started. Let's make our array and then let's make a variable called current and this will be a reference to the current node that we're on. And now let's loop through the linked list where every time we visit a node, we're just gonna add it into the array. And then once we're done, let's reverse this array and then let's create a new node based on the first element of this reversed array. And now change our variable current into the head of our reverse linked list. And then we're gonna loop through the array where every element that we see is gonna be the next pointer to our current list. And then by the time we're done, we have our reverse list, so just return it. The time complexity for the solution is surprisingly O of N, since all we're doing is just iterating through the list multiple times, and at least for Python, reversing this array takes O of N, so being specific, it's probably like O of 3N, something like that. As for the space complexity, it's O of N, since we had to make the array, and that takes up all N elements, and then we had to make the reverse link list, which is also another N elements, but even though we got our ideal runtime, we can definitely do better. Since if we did something like this in an interview, I mean, we solved the question, but they'd probably be like, He tried it. <laughs> and then they'd ask you, can we do better as a follow up question? Now, lucky for us, if you notice at the bottom of the question, there's a follow up and it says a linked list can be reversed either iteratively or recursively. Could you implement both? And the answer is yes, because I'm here. Let's do the recursive way, actually, because that one's a little bit more tricky, at least to me. But before that, let's go over the strategy for this. So instead of worrying about the nodes themselves, let's actually worry about the pointers. Since if we implement this correctly, all we really have to do is just reverse the pointers, not the nodes themselves. So how can we do this recursively? Well, whenever we think of things recursively, we have to think of the base case and then the recursive case case. The base case for this situation is one, if we weren't given a list, so there's no head, or if we're on the last node in our list, and since we're worrying about the pointers, there is no next pointer. If we hit our base case, then we're just gonna return the head. Now let's think about our recursive case. When we call this function, we're gonna get the end of the list. So from then we're gonna work backwards, where we start at the end of the list and then we end at the beginning. But for the recursive case, there's gonna be three steps to it. The first step is to reverse the pointer. The second step is to detach the reverse node from the original list. And then the third step is just returning the new head, which is our reverse link list. Let's do an example for this since it is a little confusing. So let's say we were given a link list of one, two, three, four, five. Let's check the base case. Do we have a head and do we have a next pointer? We have both, so let's move on. So we're gonna call the recursive function again. And this is gonna happen until we have five because it hits the base case that there's no next pointer. So we move up in the recursive stack and now we're at four. So in our code, we're gonna have a variable that keeps track of our current reverse link list, which is based off the results from our recursive function. And currently it's at five. So now we're gonna reverse the pointer and this is where it's a little weird. So remember our head is currently four So what we're gonna do is head dot next dot next equals head The reason we're doing this is because head is currently the second to last node in the list and head dot next is the last node in a reverse list that we got from the recursive call so by saying head dot next dot next equals head 
we're essentially moving this current head node into the end of the reverse list. It's a little confusing, but it'll probably make more sense as we keep going through the list. Okay, so now that we reverse the pointer, which moved this node into the end of the reverse list, there's currently a cycle going on because this is still connected to the original list. So all we have to do is just detach the pointer by simply saying head.next equals none. We're not pointing to anything anymore. And now that we finished all our three steps, let's just return the reverse list that we have currently and we were at four so now we move back up and now we're at three so now we're gonna do the same thing first we reverse the pointer so now we'll do head.next.next .next equals head and remember head.next is currently four but we changed four four is now the last element of our reverse list from the last recursive call so when we say head.next.next .next, we're actually making four point to three since it's currently pointing to none since we detached it okay so now that we reverse the pointer next step is detaching so all we do is head.next equals none and then the last step is just returning the current reverse list and now we go back up to two and then we're gonna do the exact same thing so now we reverse the pointer where we say head.next.next .next equals head which is just making three point to two and then now we're going to detach this reverse node since it's currently doing a cycle and then we're just going to return our current reverse list and now we're back to one so all we're going to do is make two point to one and then detach the current nodes pointer to stop the cycle and then we return the reverse list and since there's no more recursive calls we're done this is the list okay now that we're done with that let's finally code this up First thing we code is our base case, which is if we currently don't have a head, which means an empty list, or there's no head.next, which means we're on the last node. If we hit this case, then just return the head, and now we move on to the recursive case. So we'll create a variable called reverse link list, and that's going to equal the recursive function, which is just self.reverse list, and it's going to be head.next. And now we're going to do the three steps. So first step, reverse the pointers, so head.next.next .next equals head. Second step, detach the pointer to prevent the cycle, head.next equals none, and now we'll return the reverse link list. Now you're gonna hate me for this. The time complexity for this is O of N and the space complexity is technically O of N because we're making N recursive calls, which means this method is technically as efficient as the first one we did. But if we're being really picky, this one is a bit faster. So sorry about that, but that's how interviews work. You can't get what you want. <laughs> okay, now last but not least, let's do the iterative solution. This one's way easier, I promise. We're still gonna use the same idea of just reversing the pointers, but instead of a whole recursive function we can just use one variable and this variable will store the previous node and this makes reversing the list really easy since all we have to do now is just switch the current pointer to the previous node and we'll keep doing that throughout the whole list and by the end of it, the previous node will have the reverse list. So let's code up the solution. All right, so first thing is let's make our previous variable and it's gonna be initialized as none. And then we'll make our current variable, which is just a reference to the current node that we're on. And now we're gonna go through the list. And the first thing we have to do is make a temporary variable for our next node. And we have to do this because since we're changing the next node's pointer, we're gonna lose the value of the next node. All right, so the next thing we do now is say current.next is equal to previous, which means we're just switching the current node's pointer to the previous one. And now we're gonna move on to the next element. So we're gonna increment our pointers. So previous is gonna equal current and current is gonna equal the next element, which is our temporary variable. And by the time that's done, we reversed our list and that's gonna be in the previous variable. So we're just gonna return previous. The time complexity for this solution is O of N and the space complexity is O of one since we simply just change the pointers in place. All right, so that's the three main ways of solving this problem. So if anyone ever asks you this, you will be ready. I'll see you guys in the next video. So see ya.